I'm about to explain to everybody how a guitar makes. I'm about to explain to everybody how a guitar works. Here's why. So, like three times this week, I've had people ask me about the Haunted Mansion guitar that I'm working on, which I can't hold up right now because it's drying and I'm filming this video because it's drying and I don't have a room right now because my room has no ceiling because there's a lot of water that came through my head. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sleeping on this couch for now. So anyway, I have been doing a lot of uh, transferring of images onto the soundboard of that guitar. And several times I've made references to that affecting the sound to people and gotten them sort of kind of a, uh-huh. So this is to everybody who doesn't know how this works. Um, I just figured I'd make a video. This is not a guitar, this is a ukulele, but it works the same. What makes a guitar and a ukulele and a lute violin and a cello. They're all together. They're all in what is called the lute family, which means that it has a body with a soundboard. It has strings. The strings run parallel to the soundboard and there is a neck. That makes it a lute. But let's just break down into stringed instruments in general. It would be really handy if I had my harp, but it's upstairs and I'm lazy. So basically all instruments, all stringed instruments, need a box. This is the box. It's not shaped like a box, but it's a box. They need a box to store the sound in. They need strings. Sound is all vibrations. That's just like music, beginning of music, music, music. But so they have the string. The string makes noise. The string makes vibrations, which go onto the sound board. Soundboard is thin and it moves with the string, which stores all the sound in the box and then the hole is there so that the sound can get out of the box. That's an oversimplification almost to the point of being incorrect, but it works. So when you start putting heavy things on your soundboard, like... You can change the... Um, You can change the quality of the sound based on what you put on the soundboard, what shape the soundboard is, how thick it is, how thin it is, how it's braced on the inside, how it isn't braced on the inside, etc, etc, etc. What this means when you're making an art guitar that you want to be playable... I'm about to lick my nose and it's gonna be gross, hang on. Okay. What this means when you have an art guitar that you want to be playable is that you need to take a lot of care into what you're putting on the soundboard. Since I'm doing a full decal work of the wallpaper over the whole soundboard, when I seal it, I don't want to use Mod Podge again. I'm actually going to sand down as much of the Mod Podge as I can without affecting the decal work, um, which I've tested and that should work. Should. Um, and then in order to get a Mod Podge decal to actually adhere- Not now, Billy! Um, in order to get it to actually adhere, you need to do a sealer. And I'm going with this one, which is Design Master Super Surface Sealer. This is my favorite one. It's made for sealing dried flowers so that they don't shatter. Um, but in the end result, all it does is it makes an extremely thin, flexible satin finish coat. It's like, I know people who go, oh, you should use the Krylon Triple Thick Glaze. I'm like, yeah, it looks good. But I already had a problem where I covered this guitar's soundboard with rhinestones and then it stopped making sound. And in order to be a playable art guitar, it needs to be art, it needs to be playable, and it needs to be a guitar. It really only needs three things, but it's amazing how they don't want to exist in unison. Or harmony. They want to exist in, like, cacophony. Yep. <laughs> 